And I wish I could do that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Carmela. What a day the Lord has made. And we're privileged to be here in this place for this very moment that we could worship his name. And he is worthy to be exalted. He is worthy to be praised. We have some guests with us today in light of this being Brother Shama's senior chapel. Uh, we have his family and friends. Would you all stand up, those that are here with him today, in support of him? Amen. Give them a clear creek well. <clears throat> Amen. You see, we're so thankful that you're here and thankful that you've shared him with us. And he will be formally introduced by Miss Bartels uh, a little bit later on in the service. Um, we do want to pray for Dr. Fox and those traveling that are in uh, Israel. We lift them up for their safety and hope that they enjoy walking where Jesus walked and where the Bible unfolded. So we pray for them. Pray for Tabitha Haley. That's the wife of Taylor Haley. Uh, today makes one year since her mother went home to be with the Lord. And so uh, we pray God gives strength and peace in this time. Uh, Malachi Stiles, we pray for him, for Jared and Heidi as uh, he's recovering from RSV. And so uh, lift those up. How about unspoken requests today? I, I know you carry burdens, and uh, we, we know the Lord knows our needs before we ask. Is Travis Simpson, did he make it in here? Come on, Brother Travis, you pray for us, and then our worship team will come. Are you blessed today? Amen. 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 Let's go to the Lord in prayer, guys. Gracious Heavenly Father, we approach your throne this morning in the name of Jesus to thank you for waking us up from our sleep, seeing us safely through the night, and here at this pointed meeting. Father, I lift my brother Shama up to you. It's been a delight knowing him since 2015 and watching this rite of passage here today. I pray, Lord, that you calm any uh, anxiety he may have as he uh, comes to present here before us. Father, I lift up everything that was unspoken, the things that are weighing our hearts. Lord, we cast those cares before your throne because we know, Lord, you care for us. And you, Lord, can bring good out of any tragedy, trial, or uh, temptation, Lord. You can work this to the good and to the sanctification of your people. Father, we thank you for loving us, for forgiving us of our sins, and assuring us of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome, Clear Creek. Let's stand together and worship our Savior.
you give the Lord praise this morning, church? Thank you, Jesus. Now we're going to enter into our time of um, prayer here in chapel. And um, I know without it goes without saying, but uh, finals are coming up. And I know that's one big thing that we can be praying for for you students. But at the same time, there's also other things going on in your lives and in the faculty's lives and the staff's lives. And so I pray that you never skip an opportunity in this moment, whether sitting, standing, or coming to this altar, to cry out to our Savior in the midst of whatever is going on. So join me now as we begin this time of prayer.
this morning. We come to you, and we can't thank you enough for that precious blood, Lord, that your wounds supply. Lord, I think of doubting Thomas, how he said he would not believe until he felt those wounds. But then, God, when he did see you, Lord, he couldn't help but be overcome. God, help us even now, Lord. God, as we haven't even got to physically see those wounds, but one day we will. We will see the Lamb slain before the foundations of the earth. God, prepare our hearts for that moment of joy and worship, God. We will fall at your feet and scarce be able to say a word. Oh, God, but this morning, Lord, as we end this time of musical worship and we have worship through your word, through Brother Shama, God, I pray you pour that anointing blessing upon him now, Lord. Help him know that he's declaring a message, Lord, that can bring others to that very point in their lives, Lord, at the foot of the cross, at the foot of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless him greatly, Lord, and lead God and direct him as we go now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I am honored to introduce Shama Loridan today as he comes to preach his senior chapel. And I would like to say a word to the people that will hear this later. Bonjour et bienvenue to la famille et les amis de uh, Shama. Um, C'est un jour merveilleux pour lui. Et on remercie le Seigneur pour tout le travail qu'il a fait ici à uh, uh, Clear Creek Baptist Bible College. Uh, remercie le Seigneur avec nous. So my husband Richard and I had the honor to counsel and work with Shama while he attended here. We had many a laugh and a few tears as he grew in his understanding of American English, the American culture, as they say in New York, the Word of God, and God's call on his heart. Shama and I have spent many hours together proofreading his papers, discussing English and French vocabulary and syntax, ways of thinking in America, cultural behaviors and beliefs here and elsewhere, and of course, sharing the joy of our Lord in our personal walks with him. I have had the pleasure of teaching him piano and music theory. This semester, we've enjoyed working through the agony and ecstasy of choral pedagogy as he prepares his choir in Richmond for their Christmas cantata in December. Best of all for me personally, however, is the privilege I've had, I've relished, of playing in the Clear Creek Band with him for these last two years. God has extraordinarily gifted him as a musician and performer, and it has been a high honor to make music for the glory of God with Shama and his band. Richard and I have spent much time in prayer with Shama before the throne of our Heavenly Father interceding for him. It was during these prayer times that we had the sacred honor of hearing Shama's love for his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his deep commitment to faithfully follow him. We also heard his concerns for his people of Haiti and praised God for using churches in the U.S. to bless them with tools so they could find work through the mission Shama and his father uh, created, ODT. What is ODT again? Yes, one day at a time, which I should have remembered, but I forgot. We also prayed with him in his longing for a wife, and not just any wife, but the one the Lord had chosen for him, the one who would be his helpmate in ministry. And we saw the Lord answer that prayer so beautifully last year when Shama married his lovely sweetheart, Tabitha. We thank God for sending him such a wonderful helpmate. Now, in closing this prayer, Richard and I share with you, Shama and Tabithi, from Philippians chapter 1. We thank our God every time we remember you. In all our prayers for both of you, Shama and Tabitha, we always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day you came here until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And it is right for us to feel this way about both of you, since we have you in our hearts. And whether we're in Ecuador teaching pastors, sorry, and new Christians, or elsewhere, defending and confirming the gospel, you share in God's grace with us. And God can testify how we love you both with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is our prayer for you, Shaman Tabitha. 
that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God our Father. Well, good morning. Now, if you ask me four years ago, are you going to do a chapel? I said, no. <laughs> In fact, I said, well, I was trying to be a worship leader so I could get away from preaching or whatever. Well, you can see how that just worked out well for me today. So two things can happen. Either you like it or that would never happen again. So we'll see. Thank you for showing up today. Um, I'll be very cautious about today. Is Dr. Helton here? Okay. <laughs> you got to have that one. You know that. <laughs> it's been a wonderful journey here at Clear Creek. Again, if you ask me five years ago, um, I was just trying to be here and I remember I have some conversations with some of the people who implied or uh, involved on me being here. They're like, well, it doesn't hurt to try, so we'll see. <laughs> I was here trying one semester, the second semester, I was still trying. Now we call today Senior Chapel. God is good. But I want you to hear this clear. It couldn't happen without many of you that involve. And thank you, Mrs. Carmela, for for sharing your word. Um, a lot of you, really, put pieces. It's like a puzzle. Each of you have your special, a special world and, and me being here and stay here. So now, don't let that fool you. Many of you call me the Haitian sensation or the fresh guy, whatever you call me. It was not always that cool. We've seen some hard time and labor and hardship personally, with family issues, and but God, God worked his way, and yet he provided people like you, each and every one of you, to have a piece in that puzzle. Um, I'm trying to be careful not to name them because I will name each and every one of you that know that you're involved in my time here, but specifically, thank you again, Mrs. Carmela, for putting pieces in my time here, journey to, to make this happen, because I remember that. <laughs> Dean Goodman, thank you again. <laughs> when I first came here, they brought me to his class, and I can't tell in his face. He's like, you know what? This guy is like a fever, whatever he is, but I don't think he will come back, or I don't think he will just do anything here. But yet, yeah, thank you for allowing me to start. Even when we, we look at the standards, if we put it like, like that, um, my English was very poor. God used you guys. Um, who were able to speak my language, and I tell you that many of my papers were written in French, or I thought of it in French, or tried to put it together. You can see how that worked. So um, thank you for being part of this, and um, the whole faculty staff who counseled us and prayed with us, thank you for being part of this. So today, <coughs> I would like for you to open your Bible in Matthew 11, verse 28. And believe it or not, I wrote three sermons. And that one I started late last night, and I ended it this morning. <laughs> so um, when I knew chapel coming up, and I pray, God, what you want me to share here? Um, my original plan was to share about a song of praise. That was the title. Uh, just put together my journey uh, from 2010 after the earthquake, being here today what God has done in my life. Uh, a gentleman once told me, I asked, like, what would you name my life if it was a book? What would you name it? You know, from Haiti and my third world country, and now I'm here, God is doing all those things. What would you call it? He said, a song of praise. I'm like, yeah, a song of praise. So, um, because the ending is a happy story. 
when I share to you about what God has done in my whole life, it's not to tell you how sad the situation is. It's to tell you how great God is. And then um, I was trying again for, for give thanks to God because the Thanksgiving season, and I've been told, you know what? All of you are probably going to hear enough of preaching about Thanksgiving. <laughs> so I uh, pray God, and then he brought me to Matthew 11, verse 28. Let me read it for you. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. As simple as this, we'll try to see what God can unfold to this situation. Let me pray for you real quick. Thank you, God, for your opportunity to bring me here to Clear Creek. It started all with a calling. You called me all the way from Haiti. And that path, that journey seems so different. It's like a rainbow. So many colors that he took down the road to be here today. But yet, it's amazing knowing that you planned the whole thing out and you knew what you were doing. And forgive me for being uh, doubting you in the past. And sometimes I struggled knowing that you got this. Like anybody else, I, I, I doubted. I, I got discouraged. I stumbled. But what you did, you just keep getting me back up again. You made it all the way here. Thank you. Today you, you teach me that as you're still in control and you promised that you will give me rest. Because the, the only rest that we need today is found in you. I pray that you talk to your people today. Tell them what you want them to know about you. Because it's, it's so easy for us to doubt. That's what we do. We're human. Help us find the rest that come, come from you. Thank you for Clear Creek that still stand on the Bible and educated people that will fear you because the worst thing I, I'm afraid today is say something that's not what you said in your Bible. I pray that you use me today and continue to pour this in the heart of those men and, and women who wants to grow in ministry and the ministry called them to do for you. And thank you again for each and every one who involved in this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, there is a man. <laughs> I told my wife on the road, I was going to say a man from America, but I would choose to say a man from Africa so you can get the picture easy. <laughs> so uh, the reason is if I said a man from America, it will be, well, he's spoiled and there are so many ways. But a man of Africa, if you tell them, move from the road, the car will run you over. He's not going anywhere. Until it seems like he died and all that. So I figured that would work perfect. So there was a storm. <laughs> there was a storm happening. <laughs> there was a storm happening um, somewhere in Africa. So it was flooded the whole area really bad. But somehow that guy was uh, rich and he called himself a Christian. And he had a, a huge house mansion with stories, floors, and all that. So as the water rising, he was about to go higher and higher. So um, during the process, the city sent people out with boat and lifeguards, calling people on that megaphone, come out, come show me your hands, and I'll grab you, I'll send you a rope, and I'll rescue you. Is that well? My house is just tall enough. I'll go higher until it gets to the top floor. Well, the water just kept rising. A guy from an helicopter, helicopter from, and just drop a rope. He's like, grab that, and we'll pull you up. He's like, well, I have a top floor. He's just not even up there yet. I will be just fine. The water will stop. Well, the guy's gone. The water didn't stop. It keeps going up and up all the way to the ceiling. Knee deep, the helicopter come back. They're like, now we will drop you a basket. Just get in there, and we'll pull you up. Simple. He's like, no. I mean, the water is just about to stop. Well, it didn't stop. That guy gone, passed away. So when he get to wherever he went and met with God and says, God said, he said, well, God, I've been a Christian. I help a lot of people. I serve. I'm that perfect guy you're calling to be in ministry. So why did you let me die? God said, well. 
I figured after three times I stopped by and you just didn't listen, that's what you get. <laughs> so what that, does that have to do with anything? The first part, verse 28 says, come to me. So that's a clear command. That's a clear instruction that required action. So I dug up a little bit. I didn't know how to pronounce it in Latin. Maybe it says venire, but it's just close enough to French. In French, the verb to come means venir. Like, venir, viens. You're not going to stand there if I said, hey, viens. You're just going to walk up to me. You're going to do something, right? So come itself is a command that requires some kind of actions. Come here. Go there. So that guy, what happened to him? Those guys were very descriptive. They're very clear with the coming. He just wouldn't listen. He just wouldn't do anything. So sometimes in our lives, we get caught up in the same situation. For instance, like everybody else, we're anxious. We get anxious. We got worried. You know, we get depressed. And all that thing's happening. Why? It's just because we just can't see past this life we have right in front of you. But yet, we forgot. We have a God that's calling us to just come to him. So now, when we look about what does that mean to us, when you come to God, what's going to happen? Uh, Philippians uh, 4, verse 6 to 7, if you read it, he just gives us clear, clear details of things not to be doing. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in every situation, just pray and God will, what will bless you. God will accept your request and he will bless you. So what's the problem with this picture that has to do with coming or the actions? Faith, that's what make it work for you. For instance, if God says do this, just do this. But yet, because we're human, we're sitting here and being anxious being depressed, and being worried instead of just give it all to God. So let this be a challenge today. I'm just part of it like you. I'm no better than you. I'm still trying to work to listen to God's voice. Now, in that man's situation, you see different scenario, different time. The first guy came with a boat. The second guy came with a helicopter. The, the, the third guy still came with a helicopter, but use a, a basket to grab him. So sometimes in our situations, God used different strategies, different scenarios to pull us out of our circumstances. But yet in our minds, we're still waiting for a specific action to, ta- to occur. Like we want to see it in a dream or we want to hear the loud, loud voice in the clouds and fire and all that to know that God is speaking to us. It's not always like that. Now, in the Old Testament, there was one of the prophets that was running for his life. God spoke to him in a whisper. Like, sometimes we got so busy going in life. If God spoke in a whisper, would we catch it? Would we hear it? So, brothers and sisters, I want you to be attentive for, for, for what God is doing in your life and how he wants to serve you, how he wants to save you, how he wants to rescue you. All you have to do is just respond and obey. Whichever command he placed before you, just obey, and then he will make the rest. Because we serve a God who cares for us. We serve a God who changed everything. Now, it says prayer, prayer changes things. But yet, it's a prayer that from, that's come from a humble heart. When we pray, things not working. Why? Sometimes we just pray with the wrong intent. We need to be reverent. Like when we pray, we need to pray with supplications. And God will make things happen our own way. So as you, you want to be reminded today, keep your eyes open for the clear instructions for God's command. And he will deliver you. So if you get on going, and um, the same verse, 28, he says, All you who are weary and burdened, that just me, 
like I said, those few times I've been here, I worried a lot. I burdened a lot just because that's what I can do best. And I've been guilty of it. But yet, weary itself, by definitions, if we look, I take Webster, it would say weary is exhausted and, fr- and, and strength and endurance or in freshness. When you use that up, it's over. You're tired. You're done. You need a fresh encounter. You need to start over again. So now sometimes I, I used to say, well, if I, were to, if I was to create man, I would just add one more thing. That's just like a joke. It's not real. But trust me, it will be useful. I will have a refresh button. Yeah, sometimes when things go bad and crazy, just refresh it. Start over again. <laughs> but yet it's not what God is doing. He is kindly calling us to come back to him, to come back to him. And it's not a new thing to see people start worrying about circumstances and situations instead of trusting God. Even in the Old Testament, the Israelites, as they were going in their journey to go to the promised land, somewhere down the road, what were they doing? They said, well, we hungry. We need food. God provided manna. They said, we need meat. God provided quail. So guess what they did? Complain, well, is that the only food that's out there? Do you know how bad that is sometimes when we let our circumstances or ourselves, our selfishness, go before God's promises on our lives? That's what they were doing. And some of them even said, you know what? It was even better in Egypt. Wow. Egypt, we're thinking about slavery, oppression. Who doesn't want their freedom? They couldn't even see that. Their own selfishness wanted more and more and more. Instead of seeing God blessings, they were sitting here complaining. We should remember that God is calling us to come with our worries, our brokenhearted, and he will give us rest. In Psalm 138, it says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You straight out your hand against the anger of my foes with your right hand. You save me. So that's the God we are talking about. But that's the God you serving. That's the God who's leading you, who's giving you all those instructions. Or yet, it's still hard to just obey and trust them. Was there one last time or ever once God forsaken you? No, he hasn't. Now, let me just jump real quick with a little bit of my story. So, Haiti is a third world country, meaning where there's not ne- no, necessi- no necessities available. For instance, the basic things for life, Twitter, phone, fridge, everything you can think of, Right? I'm talking about real necessities like food, education, and a clean atmosphere for you to live. Everything like real necessities, they're not there. So that's where I was born. That's where I'm from. That's where I grew up. So now, like many of my peers from Haiti, it's so common to grow up with that lesser esteem as a person. You can't see any further. You grew up knowing, you know what? It is what it is. Um, I was born. If I made it to high school, and then I have to be in the street to try to find a way. And sometimes there's no way. So if you keep up with the, the news lately, the Haitians just really revolting in the country, protesting about, um, about all kind of impunity and all kind of those bad things happening to them. They've been oppressed yet they just take the street and try to revolt. Many of those people who were able to, if they were able to make it to high school, they can afford to go to college. So those guys were people who were more, more vulnerable because now they anything. I mean, you just stop by giving them 10 bucks. They're going to kill somebody for that 10 bucks. Why? They are starving. That's what I mean when I say, when I mean necessities, like 
food. They're hungry. The hunger is so great, it blinds them, and they, do, they are doing anything to survive. I mean, anything. So that's common from people where I'm from to have that mindset. You know what? Life is what it is. I was just going to be eating and just dying, and I guess, because they can't see any further. Talking about leadership? No. Talking about a faithful servant? No. Talking about a call from God? No. They're not doing it because that's not, not, that's not what everybody's doing. So God called me from that same place and take me places. And, man, I'm telling you, it's being a journey. From Lagunav, it's a little island inside of the big island, Haiti, to Port-au-Prince where I experienced a lot of things and see God's grace and favors, where I was able to, to go to those shows and contests. I was a performer, and then the earthquake shows up. I lost everything. I mean, everything. After the earthquake, I spent my family and I, we spent almost two years in makeshift tents, like plastics. Typically, uh, <laughs> I went to camping with a family, the Williamsons. <laughs> I was just trying to find the right reason. Why do we camp? Why? <laughs> because after the earthquake, I lived for two years in the camp. Like, literally, put sticks in plastic. That was my house for two years. I was just trying to find a reason. So that's where I, I spent two years in my life. But yet, throughout those times, God just favored us. He just blesses us. God sent tons of, tons of wonderful people always to, to just spoke life into us and just keep us up and positive. Now, I can tell you, during my time here, there are many counts of people I knew like young, like me, we were trying to, to do great things, and they were trying, but they took a different route, and it was a bad ending. So now sometimes I ask, why, God? Why am I here? Why are you taking those, this route with me? Where are you taking me? And then it's easier, and I found out it doesn't matter where he's taking me. I just need to follow and obey his calling. So... God used ways and put us back up again after the earthquake. And he provides many, many, many wonders. And that implies me being here today. So now, it's two sides of lives. I really love being who I was in Haiti. I love being on the stage. I love performing, traveling the whole country. I loved it. I was going to be a rock star. But yet... God has a different plan. Like the other day, my dad and I were just riding together and talking. You know, God has funny ways, like, working with people he calls. And he's trying to figure out what life would have been if I was still on the other side of this journey. We can't think what it was. We try to think any kind of things. But one thing for sure we know, I would be no Christian anymore. Because all those things that was provided for me, it's just worldly. They want me to be cool. They want me to look like that. They want me to dress this and they want me to sing that. But yet, God has his plan. So now being here today, many, many wonderful things happen. Being here from that place in Haiti, at the same thing, people would kill too to be here. <laughs> it's sad, but it's, so, it's that bad. So people really, really looking for a way out. So God just provided this for me, and it works crazy ways if I said that. Because, you know, sometimes my dad and I, what would it be like if, I were, if we were trying to save money to be here today, to go to school and all that? We also think, oh, well, that was still, we're still going to be working on saving money because we're just making a little. But yet God had the plan to bring us here today. And down that road, I've been married and met my wonderful wife and a huge and huge family, it's priceless. The promise is simple, and the promise found here in the verse, at least for me. The end of the verse said, and I will give you rest. So rest implies freedom. So what would we say about freedom? Um, the dictionary will say freedom is, rest is take freedom from something. 
from the activities you are doing, from the work you are doing, or if you're being oppressed, you're free. You resting from that oppression, being oppressed. You resting. But yet, the best rest I ever known is the one God provided. In Genesis 2 verse 2, it says like, even God himself rested after completing the great creation work. So isn't that God trying to tell us that sometimes we just need to slow down? And our minds can go like 100,000 an hour. At the same time, could we be, could, would we be able to hear God if he decided to speak in a whisper? What if he's showing us something we, we forget to, we fail to, to notice? Just because we have our own way set right before us and we want to go just that one way. So I just want you to know today, God's purpose for us is to is that we can find him and find peace, peace in him alone. Because that's what he promised. I will, I will give you rest. So now rest, if we take it on a different route, if you work out, you will very appreciate rest day and after leg day. Like, you know what that means. You just do that press, bench, and you just, you just put that press, you just want to sit down. You just want to lay down. So if you can feel it in this kind of atmosphere, that's how, how more than likely it is for you to try to grasp what it means to find rest in God. Is, it is where you just bring to him all your burden, all your worries, and you just relax. So if you see John 14, verse 27, it says, Peace. I live with you. My peace I give you. So, have you found somebody who's trying to find peace on things before? Like, you have money, but you're trying to find more money. Why? Because you just want to be safe. At the same time, they're trying to get more and more and more and more. Peace is come from God alone. It says that I give you peace. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. There's an illustration of, I didn't create that. I just found that sounds really cool. And I choose to tell you today about my, my version of it. It's the birth of a baby giraffe. So giraffe is very tall and Awkward looking, you know, even to tilt down the neck is a lot of work. So as tall as a giraffe is, when they have to give birth to their babies, can you imagine that baby's just falling off 10 to 8 feet from up down? Just fall off. So after that baby just come out of the womb, they have to lay down there like just for probably a few minutes and not moving and try to figure out what's going on. It just fall. But the mother lovingly lower her neck to smush the baby giraffe, which kind of nudge it around to see how things going. Is the baby awake or is the baby alive or whatnot? So as that nice things, I bet if you are looking, you're like, oh, that's really nice. But your grand surprise, out of nowhere, she kicked the baby real hard. <laughs> now, after kicking the baby, you'll see it just flying up the air, trying to just, what's going on? It's like when you're sleeping, somebody smash you with just a cold water in the face. You just got here, tried to wake up. But yet, the baby just born and too weak to even stand on its own leg. Well, you can get the picture, smoosh again, and kick even harder. What's going on, Mama Giraffe? The baby surprisingly tried to make it a little higher, but still stumbling and fall. Same thing again. And even a bigger kick, finally stumbling, the baby giraffe got on on the feet and just stand up and try to walk around and try to go to, to its mom and try to figure out what's going on. 
But now, imagine that you were just around and watching. I bet you you would want to ask the same question I have. But why does the mom just kick the baby like this? Why? Is there another way or what's the meaning of this? Because looking that, I'm like, you're hurting the thing. Why? But what you don't know, or what I don't know is that the mama giraffe lives in a, in a jungle. We also have lions and all those kind of wild animals. They never stop being hungry and hunting for food. Baby giraffe is one of the best. So the mama giraffe know at no, at no time we can have visit any, any time. Because I was thinking, you can just give, give the thing just a little bit of time. Give them 10 minutes or so. Maybe they'll strengthen or just give them some milk or something. One thing mama giraffe knows, there is no time. That's why you just show up, you fell off from the, from the ground. Uh, when the moment you fall on the ground, you need to be on your feet. Why? If lions shut up, at least you can save your life. So now, is that what happened to us sometimes? Isn't God, at least my dad didn't kick me <laughs> when I was born. <laughs> but isn't what happened to us sometimes when God is using circumstances to just to get us stronger, to just get our attention, to just calling us back to him. But how many times when we stay on the ground or when we fall, we just stay right there? Why? Because we're discouraged. Why? Because we don't know how. But yet it says, now, if you can do it alone, I will be your helper. If you read the rest of uh, verse 28 all the way to 30, it will tell you that. God will find ways to help you carry the load easier. Now, we have many kicks. We have a lot of kicks. All kind of ways, all kind of this situation. But yet, God's purpose is to get us back on our feet. So the first time, he gets our attention. The second time, he's trying to get us to stay consistent. Just do it. Third time, he's trying to help us understand that's the way it is. You're going to get kicked or you're going to st uh, stand up and work. So sometimes when God kicked us, we don't want to just do it to fall off. He kicked us so we can get up and keep moving because we don't know when that time is going to happen. Lions to shut up. So in Romans 8, 28, he says that we know that all things works for the good of those who love the Lord. Now, bottom line is, you don't need to stay here and struggling or sitting here and beating yourself down and feeling like you're the worst person in the world. Why? Because you're hurting. Why? Because things not going your way. Why? Because you're uncomfortable. You're serving a great God. You're serving a God who wants to give you peace, peace that only comes from him. That's why it says, come to me, all who you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. This is a promise that required actions. So now, why do you think it's okay for you to sit here and do nothing and expecting God to work things the way you're expecting him to? That requires your obedience. You have to respond. You have to act. You have to move when God calls you to. My life is a prime example. My life is a prime example. It's hard for me to, to respond sometimes. Mrs. Carmela said a few tears. The truth is there was a whole lot of tears than that. But yet we prayed together and God just brought peace in our hearts. Life is not about how hard we can cry, but it's about how good God is through it all. Can you make this your challenge today? Because life and things, they work alone. Because this world will make you confirm to what they do. You just want to live here. You just want to have a, 
a, a college degree like anybody else. You just want to be in ministry. But have you called? If you called, are you going to be faithful throughout that calling? Now, if you, even if you try to be faithful, now, what if God decides to treat you like the giraffe moms? Like, wants to kick you a few kicks. What are you going to do? Are you going to drop it? Or are you going to just get back up and keep moving? Now, if you're struggling, if you're worrying, if you have a burden, Psalm, 100, Psalm 147, verse 3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Isn't that amazing knowing that the same God that put us through those labors is the one who's going to smoosh us, like just heal us again and get us back up on our feet and just be the company we need? That's the side of the story we need to know. That's the start, side of the journey we need to embrace. Life, problems, is a result of sin. But yet, God's still faithful. He's still great. We should stop doing by leveling God promises versus life's circumstances. They don't go together. My prayer for you, brothers and sisters. What if you start today to ask God's calling in your life? Ask him to strengthen you a little more. Or maybe ask him for a few kicks. I promise you, after going back to it again and again and again and again, because sometimes on the road, my life, I got hit so bad, I start comparing kicks to other kicks. I'm like, oh, that one was a little bit better. Oh, that one is real. Now I don't have time to worry about that one. I'm, let me wait for the next one. What if that God's way to make us just get back up and get ready for the call he has in our life? I suggest that you're more attentive and be obedient to this call. Pray with me. Thank you, God, for being our God. Thank you for being amazing. Thank you for helping us understand the few kicks in lives is just to make us stronger. Because the devil is not sleeping any time. And it's always in a hunt. And hungry and starving. Try to find somebody or something to devour. But yet, thank you, God, for just kicking up to get us back and ready to move. And it's amazing even more because you're still here with us along the way. It's amazing when you called me the first time, I couldn't see it. Because part of me, I'm like, you know what? It's not going to happen because I can't speak the language. Literally, I couldn't speak the language. But yet, you had the plan to provide the ways to make it happen. How many kicks I had down the road? I messed up many times. I've done a lot of things that's not right in your eyes. But yet, you favor me. Thank you for your grace and mercy. And it's amazing knowing that's the grace and mercy you have for each and every one of us today. We just have to respond and listen to your call. Thank you for speaking to us today. I pray that you continue to encourage us to stay and remain faithful to you and you alone. Instead of worrying, depressed, or struggling, but knowing that we will find rest and you, and you alone. I pray that you continue to bless our day. In Jesus' name, amen.